to my channel, Laurel Heart. Uh, this is a watercolor channel, and I hope this um, lesson today will be of some help to you. I, I think it will be. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is um, avoiding black hole shadows in watercolor. A black hole is a place in space where gravity pulls so much that even light cannot get out. Sometimes I think the shadows in our paintings, if painted too dark, can become in essence black holes which suck all the attention to them and completely overtake the painting. This can particularly result from painting from photos which tend to really darken and flatten shadows more than they are in real life. If we want to paint natural looking shadows on things bathed in sunlight, how do we know how dark our shadow side should be? Well, there is a scientific answer to this question. Maybe we are not so used to dealing with science in relation to art, but this is a scientific answer. You paint the shadow side 40% darker than the sunlit side to make it convincing. Okay, well, when I first heard this, I thought, well, that's great, but how do you know what is 40% darker in watercolor? How can you scientifically arrive at 40%? Well, that is where your 10 degree value scale comes into play. This handy little thing can show you what 40% um, darker can be on a value scale. You have 10 degrees on here that can represent a 10% value change from one to the next value. So to make this work, you would first assess how dark or how light your um, light side is. For example, in my photograph here, um, I have um, my daughter, or sorry, my granddaughter, my little soccer player, Amber, and she is um, in the sunlight. I wanted to show you on her. Um, let's just take our value scale and look at the um, sunlit side of her skin. I'm going to call that a value two. I think that's the closest one. So if we're at a value two, then we need to go down four degrees from a value two. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and we end up 40% darker will be a value six. So if we paint the shadow side of her face at a value six, we should end up with a really convincing um, shadow that shows that this figure is standing in sunlight. Um, and let's just take a look at her, her uh, shadow side of her face. It's in the photo, it's showing it probably more at a seven, but remember that photos tend to darken shadows. So I'm, I'm gonna safely say that if we paint the shadow side of her skin at a six, we're gonna be about right. And now let's check out the sunlit side of her shirt. Um, let's say that is probably I'd say probably at about a value five. So we're gonna go, or maybe it, let's call that a value four. I think we can safely call it that. And then, so four degrees down the value scale from that will be at a value eight, which should be the value that you would paint the shadow side. And um, this sometimes, um, this formula doesn't work if you're talking about figures or subjects that are inside, indoors, where you have an artificial light source. The closer that source is going to be to the subject, the darker the shadows are going to be. But for our um, purposes, when we're talking about sunlight, um, we're going to pretty much be able to depend on the sun being the same distance away from our subjects. Um, or our model every time. And in that way, it is a perfect formula to um, use this 40% darker. So I'm going to go into my little um, subject now. Um, I've, got, I've got my figure drawn on here. And um, as I mentioned in one of my last videos, I've drawn it on another piece of paper and then traced it. So I don't have too much um, corrections on the paper. And I'm going to start out then painting um, the light side 
And um, so I'm going to mix up a little skin tone here. Um, a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of um, uh, that was yellow ochre, and that's probably about right. Okay, and maybe I'm going to water it down just a hair more because it's pretty. It's pretty light on her face where she's in the in the sun. So I'm going to paint that as um, being my light side. But notice I painted all over the shadow side too. And then down here on her arm, same thing. Gonna get that in. And over here on her other arm. This um, drawing has really got foreshortening in these inner arms here. Okay, and then down at her knees. This is her the light side. Okay, I'm going to put her hair in while um, while the face is still a little bit damp, so I kind of get a softer edge there. Her hair's a little more brown than that. I'll come in with that. And over here it's going to be a little darker on the shadow side. Oops, I don't want that to go down in her, in her face there, but that won't really matter too much because I'm going to come back on that with a darker, a darker uh, value in a minute here. Okay, and then this little part in between where it's in the sun here. Just do that in a yellow ochre. So it looks like we've got that reflection of the sun on her hair. Some of that is going down into my face again. Okay, then the green, um, I'm going to use a little um, manganese blue and um, I think that's Ariolan that I've got on here. I'm not really positive. But I just want a nice green value here for her shirt. I'm not going to put in these black stripes on her shirt so that you can see this a little better. Um, and uh, that's not going to matter there either. I'm going to leave a little bit of pure highlights over here on her arm where that's really in the sun. Keep coming down here on her. I went right into her her shorts, but that won't matter because they're going to be a lot darker anyway. I maybe came in with this a little too soon because her, <laughs> her legs aren't really dry yet. Okay, then we've got this green in her Socks. And then um, I'll go ahead and put her shoes in there because I want that green to bleed in down below here a little bit. Leave a few little highlights on her shoe to look like that's in the sun. And her cleats, I probably should call them. Of 
Okay, and then I'm going to um, just anchor her down with a little bit of shadow, so behind her here. Maybe I want that just a little more colorful. And there's probably a little connecting part here that goes through her other foot. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to let that dry. Um, grab my dryer here. I'm going to just add just a touch more skin tone in there. That's drying just a little bit light. I don't really mind that those colors are kind of bleeding into each other. I, I kind of like that effect. Okay, then, now that this is dry, um, let's get our value scale and check ourselves out here. So I'm going to say... I, I would say I'm in between a two and a three on her shirt, probably a three. So my, um, my, uh, my darker value is going to be 40% darker, so it should be right at a seven on these shadows. Um, but I, I think we're kind of right in the middle of a two and three on our lightest value. Our, our lightest value on the shirt. So probably in between a six and a seven on the, um, on the darker side. On her face, we're definitely at a two there. Um, so her shadow side is going to be um, a value six. Okay, so I'm going to, um, well, I should have left that skin tone there actually. Get that back. Okay, I had some alizarin and some um, yellow ochre. And we want this to go down to a value, well, at least a value six. So, what am I going to do to darken this? I think I'm going to add um, some. Um, some violet to it. Warm it up just a little more so it still looks like a skin tone. Okay. And so that's going to be the, the um, shadow side on her face. So I'm going to come in here with this. Come right down skipping over her her nose there that because that's really in in bright light and then she's also got a little bit of a light right above her lip there Well, I, I didn't leave that, but that's okay. You'll get the idea of this. Okay. And then that's coming around the chin a little bit. And I want to just soften that on the curvature of her forehead. That's going to be a, a soft shadow when you're coming around a, a rounded surface. And I'm going to just put in a little tiny bit of a rosiness on her cheek there. But um, you can see how little detail you can get away with on a face like that. That's basically about all you need to explain explain her face. And we'll put a shadow in her ear. 
And then coming down on her neck, um, her shadow there's a little bit um, a little bit bluer and probably has a little green in it because it's reflecting up from her shirt. So let's put that in. And a little place where her her um, the sun is coming across her skin there. We've got a little shadow under her ear too coming down onto her cheek. And I'm going to put a little green in, or a little yellow in here to make that green come into play. And now on her on her arms, we've got a shadow here, and it's not showing so much, but this would be that would be the under shadow side there on her arm, and then in between her fingers we'd have this probably same same shadow on there and this has gotten out of control here I've got to take that back because that's still in sun and we've got a little shadow under her thumb And then over on this side, she's almost entirely in shadow on that arm, except for that little piece of light there. So we'll come around that way, and her whole, her whole hand is going to be in that shadow color. And then down here onto her legs, this one is totally in shadow. We'll get that uh, color on her. And this one over here, we're leaving a, a nice little piece of that sun showing. Okay, and again, we want that softer on that rounded part of her knee there. Okay, and um, now the green. I probably should have mixed that with a, and I will, a ultramarine blue so I can get a bit deeper green here. Take that down a little darker. Okay. And over in here, I want to soften some of these edges too. Just coming down into her. And that, she does have a little ripple of sun right there. I, I'll check and see if that's going to make sense at the end, but now she's got these really nice little shadows under the soccer ball and under, maybe right here. I've maybe left her torso a little shorter than it really is in the photo because I tended to make her um, legs a little too long, so I've tried to re-correct that and make them look a little more like a, a younger girl. Okay, the um, shorts are really not in the sun so much, so I'm just going to give them a dark value. And um, probably got a little little edge of sunlight over there, little sliver. And then down here, we 
down here on her um, socks. Okay, we're coming in. I maybe darkened that a little too much, but. indicating those wrinkles in her sock there. And then on this side, same thing. Use our darker value here. And I, when I put that shadow in on the grass there, I kind of, uh, kind of lost some of the value on her shoes. So I'll get that back in. And as I'm looking at this, I can see that I probably should have um, my value is a little bit too weak on her face. So for the sake of this demo, I am going to go in on this and, and darken that just a little bit. Okay. want to get it too dark, but you do want to be sure you get that, that ratio so you can um, really tell that this is in the, in the sunlight. And I'm just going to touch Okay, and let's just, now her hair needs to be deepened just a little bit. Up in here, near her part, and on the shadow side here too. Coming down around her ear. Her, her short should be just a little darker too. Just come over those with a little darker blue. Deepen a few little shadows here over here and I have um, neglected to put the, sh the uh, shadow on the ball so I better do that with the blue And then again, that's a round form, so I want to uh, soften the inside of that. Okay, well, that's my little demonstration of um, how you can um, convincingly make a figure look like it is um, standing in the sunlight. This, this probably needed to go down a little bit in value, too. And over here, like I've darkened the face again. 
that's a little better. And back in here. So let me let's just check ourselves here. Um, let's say her her skin tone was at a value two. So I should be at a value six for her um, for her shadow side of her face. And I'm probably between a six and a seven. Um, but I think it's reading okay. Same down here. And then on her shirt, we're probably at a value, value two or three. So my green, dark green side needs to be at a six or seven. And I think I'm good on a six there. So, um, that is a really good little formula to use when you're um, wanting to convincingly show shadows on the um, on a figure or a subject standing in sunlight. I hope that you'll be able to apply this to your artwork and avoid getting any more black hole shadows in your paintings. It's uh, kind of tricky to avoid doing that sometimes, but if you follow this little scientific formula, I think um, it will help you. Thanks for joining me today. Goodbye.